to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we all stand to our feet? Amen. So happy to be in the house of God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. My sins are gone. They are underneath the blood. Let's just sing and shout and rejoice and be happy. Amen. For the Lord is good. You ask me why I'm happy. So I'll just tell you why.
Heavenly Father, we are coming to you knowing that you are the only Father that we have. We are coming in line of, your, uh, of the prayer that you taught us, uh, that we must point to the name of the Father. We know that you are the powerful Lord. You are the author of our lives. We are coming to you, Lord, that you must bless us this morning in a way that we will be in your likeliness, Father. We are praying, Lord, knowing that we have come here with our hearts, and we, uh, we are empty, Lord. We, we need to be filled up. Amen. We are putting down and casting down everything Amen. that you must be, that you must only take control, Lord Jesus. Yes. We are submitting every soul, everyone, Lord, in your hands, yes. uh, so that, Father, uh, you must have your way to us. Amen. I am praying for our pastor, and I am praying over this, this meeting, Lord. May you take control. May the, may the Holy, Holy Spirit come and an, anoint all of us, Lord, so that at the end we must see that you have moved from bench to bench. May you forgive our faults and our shortcomings. I am submitting, Lord, that at the end of the day, everyone must testify that he have experienced your move. Yes. I have prayed it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You all shall say? Amen. Amen. You may be seated, saints. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning we've got two items in song. We've got uh, Brother Moses and then the Butler Sisters. Amen. Uh, Brother Moses can come and sing for us. Amen. <coughs> Jesus is all that we have to live for. Amen. Amen. No other. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I have a song. Look and light and live and live. In only brief to 236. So I'll sing Chichewa. Yeah. Now tenga wambuye. Alleluia. Utenga undiku pata. Mwale mbedwa mau wake ale Luya buya ngana ukale Moyo ya ngana ya ngana Mbali wanga Kwa isu kuli Malimbi dwa mau aki alleluia puya ngana ukali moyo utenga waji kundi alleluia kwaiwe tu bwenzi la 
Kalimbi Kiza Have your race Amabili Avumbi Sanjivururu Awali stand to our feet. Take me into the Holy of Holies. Take me past the crowds of people. Take me to the
Take the cold, clench my lips, here I am. Amen. Let's just raise our hands and let's talk to the Lord. Father, we want to say thank you for this wonderful day, a day called Resurrection Day, the first day of the week. And Father, we want to say thank you, Lord, for keeping us and holding us to every day. Lord, there's 24 hours in a day, and oh God, you've been kind to us. We want to remember, oh God, those in hospitals, and those who are in prisons, and those of oh God who are suffering at home. We pray, God, that the angel of God will visit with them, and our Lord, you will be with them. Father, we pray that you will comfort the weary. May you come and encourage the encouraged. May you lift, O oh God, the feeble heart. O oh God, may you just bless the believers, the God around the universe, wherever they might find themselves. Lord, around uh, in a little small home, in a hut, or outside of a tree, or in a building. And wherever, oh God, they will gather that you will bless your people. We pray, God, for our continent, our country, pray, O oh God, for many other continents, people, and Father, we want to pray that the hand of God will be with us. Lord, we never <clears throat> called ourselves, but we know that you called us. It wasn't by our good works, what we have done, <clears throat> our choosing. Lord, was not in time, but was in eternity. And so, God, we pray for our homes, we pray for wives, we pray for the single widows, we pray, O oh God, for the widows, widows, widowers, we pray, God, that you will bless every local assembly, and that you will bless every ministry, we pray, God, for the voice of God recordings, for the work they're doing, and, O oh God, any other publications, and, O oh God, whatever they're doing for the Lord, may you bless them. And Father, we come to understand that we are not divided, but we are one universal body. God, each member is different, and each one operates in a different way. You have a five-fold ministry. God, you have a variety of sand, variety of God of things happening on the earth, lakes and rivers and mountains and trees. And Father, we just want to celebrate and thank you that you've used of God, men of God in different ways. Some are pastors, some are teachers, some are evangelists, some are of oh God. Whatever God you've ordained them to be, we pray that you will bless your people. We pray, O oh God, this morning for every father that is here. God, they are the decision makers of the home. They have to make decisions for the family. They are the security guards. They are there, oh God, as the leaders. They will give an account <clears throat> one day, Lord, uh, Lord, for their wives. And, and I pray, God, that you will give them grace to make the right decision. The attribute that you've given them, oh God, to be a father. And a oh God, to not abuse that position, <clears throat> to be a military slave driver. But a oh God, to take the position, of oh God, as a real example. As we know, there is no power like the power of example. We pray, God, that you will be with every man of God, every marriage, every home. And uh, God, may you bless every ministry. And uh, God, above all, we want to say thank you for the message of the hour that you have sent to us in this day. We want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to greet you in the name of the Lord. We are certainly happy to be back in the house of God again. We want to give a special welcome to our pastor, brother, brother, Brother Martin uh, Kanda Kandawera from uh, Mazusu, it's about 350 k's from Lalongwe. We want to give him a special welcome. May God bless him and may God be with him. May the Lord uh, use him this morning in a very, very special way. As I said to him, the only way God can use any man if he stays the way God has designed him. So may God bless him. We want to also want to wish all the fathers today. <clears throat> we want to wish you happy Father's Day. May the Lord bless you for the attribute that God has given you to be a leader, to be a provider, to be a protector, to be a security guard, to be there for the family. May God bless you. May God be with you at this time. We'd like to welcome all the saints that's come back from Botrova that is here with us. 
And we also like to welcome Sister Jilly uh, Chitindi from Zimbabwe and Sister Beauty. We'll let you give them all a special welcome and all the visitors. May God richly bless you. <clears throat> we also want to welcome Sister Helena, uh, that is uh, my sister-in-law from Canada. We want to give her a special welcome. May God richly bless her as well. And then we would like to thank God for adding another year to my life on Tuesday. And please remember me in your prayers as I will be traveling to the Eastern Cape from Brother Ezekiel. We want to wish our Brother Ezekiel happy birthday. May God bless him and be with him. A thankful heart to the Lord for my mom, <coughs> Sister Dricka, who has was discharged yesterday, being stable again. Your brother in Christ from Brother Simeon Ahrens. We want to thank the Lord for our Sister Dricka. We want to thank the Lord for successful operation of my daughter from Sister Brother uh, Shakara. Uh, then we, God bless you, Pastor Church. Thanks for your praying for our mom last week. She's doing much better. All is well from the Blau family. We want to thank you for the mother. We also, God bless you, saints. May you please pray for me as I will be starting with my exams tomorrow from Shalom from your sister in Christ. Then we also want to pray for all the ministers that has gone out today. May God richly bless them as they would minister. Please pray for Sister Sarah John. She was traveled to Zimbabwe. Her elders, um, <clears throat> sister passed away. We want to pray for our dear sister that God will richly bless her. God bless you, Pastor Saints. Please pray, keep me in prayer as I begin with the exams on Wednesday. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and on Wednesday the 21st, your brother in Christ from Brother Quemba. Then please pray for Sister Leo. She's not feeling well. God bless from Sister Zelda. Please pray for traveling mercies for, <clears throat> from the Eastern Cape and all the families who also attended the funeral of our father from Brother Piwe. Please pray for me. I have a pain in my waist and right leg from Sister Tembi. Please pray for my wife. She suffers with stomach pains uh, because of colon from Brother Angus. And also please pray for me. My eyesight is failing me from Brother Raymond Jackson. Let's offer pray for these requests. Heavenly Father, we deem this a great privilege that we can always come before you. Amen. And God, as we hear it from a servant of God that said, the greatest thing a man, human being can do is to bow his head, open his heart, speak to his maker. Yes. And Father, we come before you because, not because of duty, but because of a love affair. It's like a father or a mother wanting, forcing that girl to love the boy or forcing the girl to love the boy, girl. But a God, there's no feeling for that person. And so, Lord, we have a feeling and we know that we love you and we serve you. And we want to pray this morning for Brother Ezekiel that you will be with him as he travels to the Eastern Cape. We want to pray for Brother Raymond, for Brother Raymond Jackson. Uh, his eyesight is failing him. God is getting not all younger, but he's getting older. And we pray that you will come and restore our brother's eyesight, that you will be with him. We pray for Brother Angus, his wife, who suffers with pains because of the cold. And we want to commit our sister before you and ask that the angel of God will be with her. We pray for our brother Tembe, O God, who have a pain in his waist and his right leg. We pray, God, that you will just uh, guide our brother to eat the right thing, do the right thing. And Lord, you are the great healer and you are the great one that helps us. We want to pray, O oh God, for our brother Apiwe and the, the, for all those traveling from the Eastern Cape, for all our families who attended the funeral service of our father. We want to pray for the family that you'll comfort their hearts. You know how to comfort, you know how to encourage, you know how to discourage. And O oh God, you the author, Lord, of life, the author of joy, author of peace, and you've allowed death to come in that you can show that you are the resurrection. We want to pray for Sister Leo that's not feeling well. We pray that the angel of God will be with her. We want to remember our sister Tilly, O oh God, up in Johannesburg. She's on morphine at the moment. We pray for her that you will undertake for her in a very special way. We pray for Brother Billy. We pray for the children. We pray for the family. And we pray for those that are circling around her that the angel of God will be with her. Pray for her family, her siblings, and we just want to pray that the hand of God will be with them. We also want to pray, O oh God, for the Williams family who buried uh, Brother Tony yesterday and also for the McAllen family. We pray that you will be with these families. We pray, O oh God, for our brother who is doing exams on Wednesday. We pray that you will be with him. We pray for Sister Sarah John who has traveled to Zimbabwe. Lord, our eldest uh, sister has passed away. 
We pray for our dear sister. We pray for all the ministers that has gone out today. We pray that you will bless them and be with them at this time. We pray for the believers from Batrava that is here, or coming all the way, Brother Morton and different ones, Lord, making an effort to be here. We pray that you will bless them and uh, pray, your God, as they will meet with Brother Martin. And we pray that the hand of God will be with them. We also want to pray, your God, for, for our sister, Lord, starting exams. We pray that you will be with them. We pray for our sister Blau. We pray, your God, for, Lord, for somebody's daughter that you come through successfully. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Drika Aaron's Lord, that you, she's been discharged. And, and, oh God, we pray for Sister Elena. We pray, O oh God, for the saints, uh, Sister Jubilee. And, and uh, we pray for each and every one, Sister Beauty. We pray, God, that the angel of God will be with them. Be with us, O oh God, as we look to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control while we welcome our pastor, Brother Martin Kandawere, for our from uh, Mazusu to minister for us. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may be, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you may be, I will go. Be it in a quiet passion. Be in a quiet passion. Or by a gentle stream. The shepherd of my soul. The shepherd of my soul. Is by my side. Should I face a mighty? Valley, dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul, the shepherd of my soul, will be my guide, shepherd of my soul, shepherd of my soul, I need you just wave for him. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated for a while. I'm so thankful to Pastor Beckett for the invitation he extended to me and I'm happy to be represented with you this other side of the country. Uh, Uh, since I came, I had a wonderful time with uh, Pastor Beckett. I've learned a lot of things. He is a veteran and well seasoned in the message. I always regard him as an elder. Uh, he's done so much to support the message to support local churches in Malawi and other neighboring countries of which we are so happy and we appreciate. 
I have known Pastor Beckett for quite a long time. And I have always enjoyed his preachings. You always stand for the message. And quite an elder. Uh, anytime we come to Malawi, when there is an opportunity given, I've always followed to sit down and hear from him. Always, he has never deviated from the message. Uh, he is what he was. And um, you are blessed Amen. to have a man who can stand for the message, feed you the pure word of the hour. Uh, that's not easy. I have known a lot of great men associated with them, but many have gone their own ways. But uh, I consider Pastor Beckett an elder. Not only in South Africa, but in the message. Somebody you can depend upon. You know, he's so humble. Uh, you look at the phone he's using. <laughs> uh, you know, you feel ashamed. Eh? <laughs> you always talk about the word. And... Uh, you know, I had my pad wherever I went from, uh, from Friday. I would just be lighting. So it had been preaching to me all this time. I have enjoyed every bit of my stay here. And, uh, you know, I keep loving more and more. He's quite a man of God. Um... He doesn't go for opinions. No. You always line up with the message. He will tell you what the prophet says. We, if we had a handful of such elder men seasoned, the message would still be pure. Uh, God should help us. As technology is advancing, you know, people are going their own ways. But uh, if we have such men that can always push you closer to the message, we really need to thank God for that. Um, you might have not traveled, but I'm telling you the truth. That this world is full of things. So if you've got a man who can preach to you the message, you need to thank God for that. Amen. Pray for him. He's aging. But may God give him more days. Amen. He's still got a work to do. You know, I bring our appreciation to the pastor as well as the church here. You know, we are hit bad with the cyclone, Friday, in Malawi. And a lot of people lost their lives. And uh, six of the believers were part of the people who died. And about 2,000 believers were affected. But we are so much thankful that the, believer, the believers tabernacle, Bible tabernacle here, you assisted us. Uh, it's not easy. You are equally concerned and uh, we appreciate uh, your help. It came at the right time and our affected brothers were helped. I would also like to appreciate the church together with the pastor for the wonderful work you are doing 
You know, we had been receiving books from Voice of God, but uh, they stopped printing books. So the believers in Malawi got stranded. We didn't know what to do. But we are so thankful to God that Pastor Beckett came in to help us with books. And Message Hub also came in. So we are home and dry now. We have books. And may the good God who knows how to bless, bless you richly. Uh, you are wonderful people. I have enjoyed the spirit. I've been with some other brothers. Brother CJ, Joseph, you know, you are wonderful people. Uh, may the good God continue blessing you. You know, when it is your first time to visit a church, there are a lot of expectations, a lot of questions. <laughs> Who is this guy? Where does he come from? <laughs> How does he preach? Does he jump up and down? <laughs> so, you know, to clear some of those questions, maybe I give you a little bit of my background <laughs> that is going to help you push out some of the questions. Um, I am Martin Mukandavide from Malawi. I am married to Beatrice. God has blessed us with seven children. Two have gone to glory, so I have five. So all the five are now independent. We are back to two with my wife. <laughs> uh, I believe the message in 79. And 88 is we had a brother from Germany. By that time, there was no message church in Malawi. So, a brother from Germany by the name of Edward Frank, he came to Malawi through the invitation of some Pentecostal ministers. And when they had a meeting, it happened that they went there. Then, that was the first time the prophet was well introduced and a new this was a man of God. When Brother Frank had, went, uh, had gone back, the same ministers invited believing ministers from South Africa, that was Brother Latif and Brother Lucas, who came to Malawi, and that time I got baptized. When Brother Latif and Lucas went, the same Pentecostal ministers invited Brother Harold, Peter Bland, and uh, Don Babris. So Brother Harold and Don Babris did quite a job by evangelizing uh, all the locations in Blanta. They stayed for some days and something started coming up. And when Harold and Don Babbles went back, they told Brother Jenkins. So Jenkins came, accompanied by Brother Jeremiah from Zimbabwe. They helped us so much until a small group came up. Now, when the message was established, uh, we took it upon ourselves to evangelize the whole Malawi. From far south to far north. So we covered the whole nation evangelizing, and there was a massive exodus. And Malawi had shaken up, but you know, 
we didn't know there was some other protocol to be followed to have maybe it should be known to government or whatever. So we just went flat evangelizing. And in the going of time, uh, me and Paddington were arrested. We were taken to Boris uh, to answer some questions. But by the grace of God, all was well. Amen. We had political and religious pressure. They were so shaken because a lot of people were coming out from their denominations. So they had to take it upon themselves, went to the president to speak bad about the message. But we thank God the president was on our side. Amen. So they did everything they could do, but to no avail, the message still went on. I remember at one other time, we were called to the police, and they told us, from today, we have closed your church. No more preaching. If you preach anywhere and we find you, we're going to arrest you. We tried to negotiate with them, but to no avail, said, no, just do it and you'll see what we're going to do. But they said you don't have a constitution that can allow you to preach. So by that time, we had already drafted a constitution and it had gone to the president to sign. And now, you know, our first president was no nonsense. And at that time, it was one party system. You couldn't differentiate within the government and the party. But by the grace of God, within the shortest time, we were called by the police within the week. At that time, we didn't have cell phones, cell phones for quick communication. And obviously, some other people were supposed to be found at the church. But now, within the week before the weekend, the president had signed the constitution and it allowed us to preach anywhere. Amen. So we really thank God that God can use some of the people to do his will. Amen. So we are so thankful. So the message got grounded, were established, and a lot of groups came up. Then our first church was in Blanta. Uh, we had some elections, and uh, I hope you remember Brother Paddington Guira, he came here. So he had more votes than Dixon Kandoje seconded him, and I was the third. Now, Brother Paddington couldn't be the pastor because by that time he was not married. So he was disqualified. <laughs> So, Brother Dixon was our first pastor, and I was his associate. We thank God, by his grace, uh, he used us to pioneer the message, and uh, now Malawi is covered all over. You have message believers. We uh, appreciate God. Um, as I said, I'm happy to be in your midst. I will do myself justice uh, to keep up time so that we are out, good time. If there's anything, we'll continue in the other service. May the good God each bless you and prosper your life. Uh, if you are free to stand as we read the word of God. <clears throat> we are reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 24. We read from verse 1. I hope we're there. Oh. Verse 1. 
And Abraham was old and was striking in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his elder, elder servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, my hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, unto my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, Verse 25, I'm ready. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. Let's close our eyes for, the, for prayer. Father God, we step out that you can step in. Without you, it's just like a social gathering. We therefore invite you, Father God, to be the guest of honor. We've read the Holy Scriptures. And Father God, we just depend upon you. May you come, take over. Amen. Help me, Father God, as a minister. And may you help your sons and your daughters. We commit the reading of your word in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Uh, I came at a time when the weather is uh, a little bit cruel. Uh, you are used to it. <laughs> uh, oh God, we hope. Uh, you are welcome once again to this morning service. Uh, from where we have read, when Abraham was growing old, he had one thing that he wanted to see done and done right. That was to see that his son Isaac got married the right way. You know, it was all about the continuity of the right seed. Abraham knew he was going, but he had a son who was supposed to take the banner. So he had an interest to say out that Isaac was well married. And now it behooved Abraham he looked around among his servants and he trusted in one of them by the name of Eliezer. Abraham knew that the first destruction in the days of Noah came because of intermarriages. The sons of God took to themselves the daughters of men. Hence, he commanded his servant, go and take a wife for my son, not among the Canaanites, but should go to his relatives. I want to read a quote. This is from the message, Time of Decision. It was preached in 1959. I'm reading paragraph 13. Call for your attention. 
at this time, and this time came, and Abraham was determined that he did not want his son marry and believe him. That would be a good thing, a good decision for a Christian today. Who are sons and daughters of Abraham to make the same decision about their children? It would be a good decision today for parents in the message to have an interest for their children. You know, it looks we are in a busy time when there is little interest to our children. Everyone has got his own way. They meet maybe at the evening hour. No concern about our children. But as believers of the message, the prophet says it will be a good decision. If we had put interest, because remember, they will have got to reflect who you are in the family. He goes on to say, now, it did not make any difference how pretty those unbelieving girls were and how nice women they were. But Abraham did not want his son connected with that kind of stuff. And so he had to make a time of decision on who he would marry. There has to be a concern if we got children and they are about to make the choice, we go to have an interest. Because their problem will be a problem. We have got to be interested. Find out where they go. The type of association. What type of girl he wants to marry. Because at the end of the day, it will be a problem. We need to be interested. We have a lot of problems today. Because we have little interest. We don't know what goes around with our own children. They have become our bosses. They tell us what to do. We can't anymore control them. But as message believers, we have got our responsibility. We've got to be interested. Where did you go? Why are you coming this hour? You are trying to build a character. When you are gone, your name will still be mentioned. They will appreciate they had a good daddy. They had a good mama. But look, that time is going out. Everyone has got his own thing to do. And we have left the things of God undone. No matter, the whole thing is crumbling down. Now, what does the prophet say about it? We have many times paid no interest to watch how they come, they go, they do whatever they want to do. All is well. We are confined on our phones, on our Facebook. Everyone looks busy in the home. The wife is looking this way, chatting with somebody from Zimbabwe. The man is looking the other way, chatting with somebody from Germany. They can't talk to one another. The whole house is silent. And children are busy on cartoons. 
all the things of God are left undone. Yet we want to go to heaven. It's unfortunate. You knock on the door, you feel everybody's going out. No, they're there. This one is smiling with somebody in India. The other one smiling. They can't talk to one another. You mention of taking care of your children, you don't have time. They do whatever they want to do. No wonder. Churches in the message are now formal. The world has crept in. And all the fire is setting down. The prophet has this to say. That is Elijah. In the message Elijah. That is the reason the world is in this condition today. They haven't got time to take care of their children. They let them run in the streets. You women calling yourself real mothers and don't even know where your kids are at half the time. That is not only Methodist and Presbyterian. That's in Pentecostal too. And I would say not in Pentecostal only, but in the message believers. You know that is the truth. Talking about juvenile delinquency, eh? it is the whole lot parental delinquency. What the parents need today is to get some of these old beer cans out of that ice box. Take the cars out of the table. And put the Bible right there. And open it up and call the kids around and have a prayer meeting. That is what we need. But now when you look at what is happening in our homes, you cannot differentiate with the denominations. It is unfortunate. When we know he is about to come, and any time he can come to pick up the bride, but we are so unconcerned. That is what we are missing today. Family prayers. Call our children together. No matter who you are, but you have God's responsibility. You go to home to look after. You have got your children to turn them the right way. This world is going the wrong way. You are witnesses. You know it's going the wrong way. But you are a believer, a child of God. And we are equipped with the message of the hour. What he tells us, and that's what we are supposed to do. It is missing in a home. Abraham had a concern for his son. He was so connected to his children. He was so concerned about their life. And when he was growing old, he knew I will leave my children back here. And when he looked around, the condition was bad. He turned around to Eliezer. Eliezer, come, make a vow. I want you to go find a wife for my child. 
And not all of these unbelievers they canonize. Your real marriage has got to be connected with a relationship. There has to be a blood relation. He said, don't go to canonize. There's no blood relation there. They are unbelievers. Go on my homeland. Take a wife for my son, Isaac. I will read, I will read your court from the time of decision. And we learn here a beautiful lesson of Abraham. A type of God, the father handing for a servant to go find a bride for his son. We learn from here a good example. That is what the father is doing today. That is what God is doing today. He is looking over his group to say somebody that he can put trust in. That will take the message that sent to the bride. And he decided that Eliezer was the selected one. Because he had found Eliezer a trustworthy servant. He had been loyal, a true and upright and just and honest. That is the kind of a servant that God can pick to take the message from him to the church. As one that has been proven to be just. Today we need real men who can take this message and compromise. As I was talking about Pastor Beckett, you know, he's a real man. Not just to praise him, no. But somebody who has got a concern, he's got peoples, he's got people at his heart. But you know, a lot of ministers today, they don't have people at heart. No. They can do whatever they want to do. If a minister cannot stand with the message, he doesn't have a heart for the people. If you look at the Old Testament, you see Aaron. Aaron was the high priest. He was standing for the whole congregation of Israel. And no one had any right to go in the Holy of Holies except Aaron. And Aaron had the 12 stones on his chest. Those 12 stones were standing by the 12 tribes. So he had them at his heart. When he was going the Holy of Holies, he was going there with the people at the heart. A real man of God has got to have the people at heart. If you don't have the people at heart, leave the pulpit. Let somebody take it over. You are so precious people. It has to take God come all the way from glory. He died for you. And he has put you under the trust of, here, the trust of Brother Beckett. And he has to be a real man to take you at his heart. When he takes you at his heart is when he will feed you with the right material. Eliezer was trustworthy. Now remember, here is Abraham. And he got a son, Isaac. And Isaac is about to get married. 
That was a type of what is to be done in our time. Eliezer knew this is a hard task. When he looked at Abraham, the type of man he was, his likings, he knew, I've got to seek the favor of God. Now, in the message, in the Sumna Church age, the prophet has this to say. He said, notice here that Jesus, by the Spirit, in every age, addresses himself to only one person. Relative to the word for that age. I call your attention. In every age, God has chosen one man. Not two. If that can find room in our hearts, we will respect the choice of God. When God chooses, he doesn't have, you know, to bring people, hear their suggestions. He does it himself. Amen. He is a sovereign God. Amen. He decides the way he wants. He chooses the way he wants. So he has one man in every age. Relative to that word for that day. Only one messenger for each age receives what the spirit had to say to that age. So here is the choice of God. He has picked one man. And now this one man is to deal with an age. You know, as a parent, your responsibility is just as a family. When you come here, Pastor Beckett, his responsibility is a little, is a little bit wider because it has got to cover all of you. But now, when you come to the prophet, his responsibility is more wider because he covers the whole world. Now, people in that age, they have got to recognize what God has chosen for them. And now God will have got to vindicate this man so that you and me can know whom God is dealing with. So the prophet says, only one messenger for each age receives the spirit. What the spirit had to say to that age. Amen. Now, when God, you know, when those letters were being registered, or addressed rather, every letter was addressed not to a church age, but to a messenger. Amen. So it is a, a letter to an individual. Unto the angel, not unto the church, unto the angel of the church. So the letter in particular is addressed to this man. So he has the responsibility of taking that word to the whole generation. And that's why there is only one voice in an age. God breathed a revelation in that age. And that revelation is what builds up a ministry. There is no ministry without a revelation. You have first to catch a revelation. And from the revelation, that's where you build your ministry. So the prophet says, there is only one revelation for each generation. And from that one revelation, there is a ministry. Any other ministry has got to line up with what God has given. 
that one messenger is the messenger to the church. And that's where we have trouble today. Everyone wants to claim he is something. And that's why there's a lot of competition. Oh, maybe I am a mighty preacher. Oh, no. There is no mighty preacher. There is no preacher number one. There is only one preacher. That's the Holy Ghost. There is no great one. There is no small one. Now, in the eyes of God, we are all the same. When the Spirit of God comes and uses somebody, it is for the edification of the church. But now we have a lot of competition. Everyone wants to show he is the great one. It's hard to find humble people today. You know, at times you feel much ashamed. When you look at the prophet, he was driving a Ford, an old Ford. He never had any ambition of those great things. But when you look at the ministers today, everyone wants to have that latest. Then we are drifting away from the real nature of a Christian. I don't say driving a good car is bad, no. But you know, you have motives behind what you do. Those who hear are not getting their own private liberation. Nor is a group getting their collective liberation. But each person is hearing and receiving what the messenger has already received from God. Amen. Now, thinking or saying that this is the case. For Paul set the pattern under the hand of God. Paul alone had the full liberation of his day. Amen. Evidence by his confrontation of the other apostle who admitted that Paul was the prophet messenger to the Gentiles for that day. So Paul knew who he was in his day. He had the revelation for that day. And he had the responsibility to bring what God had given him to all that generation. Amen. And everyone who wanted to be saved had to take that given way. Amen. Now in every age you have exactly the same pattern. That is why the light comes through some God-given messenger in a certain area. And then from that messenger, there spreads the light through the ministry of others who have been faithfully taught. Anyone carrying that ministry anywhere, he had got to know what he's doing. They are supposed to be faithfully taught. But of course, all those who go out, Don't always learn how necessary it is to speak only what the messenger has spoken. We don't see the necessity, the importance. Because remember, when you add to the word of God, it's no more the word of God. Jesus said, by your traditions, you have made the word of God of no effect. Amen. When you are to the word of God, it is no more the word of God. Therefore, it can't be effective. Yes. 
it has become your word. And my word, your word will go. But the word of God will never go. Heavens and earth will pass away. But my word will never, said Jesus Christ. So we don't see the importance and how necessary it is to only bring to the people what the prophet brought. Because that is what has got life. Any other thing, no matter how glittery it might be, no matter how loud it can be spoken of, it doesn't have life. Life is only in the revealed word of God. They take away here and add here and soon the message is no longer pure. When you take away from the message or you add your opinion to the message, it doesn't become pure anymore. Therefore, it cannot bring out the results. It behooves us to stand and stay by that word. Because that's where life is. How careful we must be to hear one voice. For the Spirit has but one voice, which is the voice of God. Paul warned them to say what he said. Even Peter did likewise. He warned them that even he, Paul, could not change one word Amen. of what he had, give, had been given by revelation. He says, be it an angel from heaven or say something different to what we have given you, let him be accursed. The prophet goes on to say, oh, how important it is to hear the voice of God by the way of the messenger. Hear his voice by the way of the messenger. That is his chosen way. We may have our own opinions on it. It won't work. It won't do any good. Because God had provided a way. And that way, no matter what happens, it is going to stand. Amen. That is where life is. Amen. He does it in a humble way. And the high-minded people miss it. Oh, how important it is to hear the voice of God by the way of his messengers. And then say what has been given them to say to the churches. You get it from the messenger. Then take it and give it to the people as it is. Then that message will produce results. But when you add your own opinion, you add, you add your own views, it's no more the message. And that's why I was appreciating Pastor Beckett here to say he just stands for the message. You are blessed, you may not know. Okay, let's just go to our subject. In the book of Genesis, we see God saying, it is not good for man to be alone. Then he says, I will make him a help meet for him. Now when God had created all animals, there were two, two, two. But Adam was alone. Then God, at one other time, says, it's not good that he should be alone. It was not Adam complaining. Adam never went to God and said, but you know, you have made two, two, but what about me? Adam was warm and dry. He enjoyed his life. But it was God says, it's not good. 
So we see God presenting a bride to his son, Adam. Now, when God had created Adam, he created two in one. The Lord in the spiritual realm. Now, in the spiritual realm, they were co-workers, co-equal. In the spirit, in the spiritual realm, there was no the woman is weaker. No. They were co-equal. Now in God, he had attributes. To be a savior, to be a father, to be a redeemer, to be a healer, all those things, you know. But now, how is he going to manifest his attributes out? How can, be a, how can he be a redeemer there's no one lost? How can he heal somebody if there's no one who is sick? But yet in him, he has all those attributes. That's what he wants to be. Then now, he's trying to find a way how these attributes can be manifested out. Then now, he is his own son. In his own form. He cannot fall. Adam cannot, could not. Because he was in the image of God. Anything in the original does not sin. You look at a dog. You look at a dog. It's in the original. It doesn't sin. It doesn't change. Anyone off the original will change. A bird has always built a nest from Genesis, from Eden, until now. No civilization is still building a nest. A dog, they are naked. It doesn't know. It can move all over. They are still in the original. When man was in the original, they didn't know they were naked. But when sin came, something happened. Okay, now, you know, the fall was God's design. Yes. I was quiet so that you can find room. <laughs> Okay, God presenting his son a bride. That bride was in Adam. It didn't mean God had forgotten. No. He is a God who can't forget. He had already provided Adam a wife. But that wife was part of him. That was a shadow of what he was to do in the future. Because we are looking at the first Adam. But there is to come a second Adam. So whatever he did with the first Adam, he has got to do the same with the first Adam. So the first Adam, his wife, his bride was in him. Then the second Adam, his wife, has got to be in him. So he had him right in his own mind. Now, when time came, you know, marriage is about reproduction. So when God, so time was rip, ripping, that, that should be done. So he says, I don't want him to be alone. So what he did, be with me. Adam was in the image of God. The spiritual realm. That's Genesis 1, 27. Then he brings him down in the physical. Genesis 2, 7. Now, in the physical, he is alone. Then God says, now, 
I am not happy. He is alone. So what does God do? He pulls a woman from Adam. Yes. Now, the separation or the separating of Adam and Eve was done in the flesh. In the spiritual realm, by creation, they were one. But now God wants to be a redeemer. He cannot be a redeemer by letting Adam fall. Adam cannot fall. So what does he do? He brings something from him that is a byproduct. That is now a woman. In the flesh, she is a weak vessel. So she is pulled out. Now, by pulling her out from Adam, then there are now two. In the spiritual realm, they, by creation, they were one. Now they come down here, there are two things God is aiming at. One, reproduction. Two, he's going to manifest his attributes. How is he going to do it? Through the fall. So four was God's provision. Amen. I have the course I can read. So when a byproduct came out, she was subject to fall. That's why a woman is a weak vessel. If you look down, learn it across the Bible, every fall, every destruction came because of a woman. You've got a company full of men. There's no problem there. Oh, they'll be happy of one another. But bring a woman there. The whole thing is scattered. She is the cause of all the fall. So God gave Adam... A part of him, not a separate creation. That is a sign. Jesus is going to have a bride, not a separate creation, but something that is part of him. Amen. This makes predestination so open. You are not saved now. No. We are eternal because we are part of the eternal God. Yes. Because eternity does not start. Okay, let me. Now when we come to second Adam, as we read from the book of Ephesians, now Ephesians 5, I'm reading 27. That he might present to himself a glorious church. Amen. Not having spot or wrinkle. Yeah. Or any such a thing. But that it should be holy. And without blemish. This is the church that is going to be presented to Christ. And this church has going to be part of Christ. Amen. Okay, now we are looking in the beginning. So Adam is alone. Then in him is a bride. Now God wants to be the redeemer. How is he going to do it? He's going to do it through the fall. So he separates Eve from Adam. They are now separated. They were one in creation. They came in the flesh. God separates them. Then the same God unites them in marriage union. Then he says, whatever God has put together, don't let any man put us under. They are once again brought together in marriage union. Now, here is Eve. And Abraham wakes up 
He looks around. Says, there's, there's a strange creature. Remember, he was the one naming. So he knew every creature there. But now he looks at this. And I would hear God say, can you speak anything? So Abraham looks. He says, she's part of me. She's born of my born, fresh of my flesh. Then she will be a woman. Woman. Because she has come from me. So something came out of Adam and that is a byproduct. Then out of the byproduct that's where the four came in. Jesus, the second Adam, in the spiritual realm, he was one with the bride. Yes. We were in him. And there, in creation, we were one with him. But he had to come lower until he was in the flesh. When he was in the flesh, we were with him. Until on Calvary we got separated. Then we are going to be united together in marriage union. And that are going to be done in the flesh. Not in the spiritual realm. Man didn't sin in the spirit. He sinned in the flesh. Then sin had got to be dealt with in the flesh. Now remember, it was not the desire of man to get lost. No. It was the desire of God so that he can show he is a savior. So he provided a way that man can fall. So that he can manifest his attributes. So the woman falls. That's why God cannot send an angel to die for us. Because it was not the desire of an angel. He who desired it has got to carry it. That's why he had to come all the way from glory. So that he can save what had fallen. And we were already part of him. There was no way God would have killed Adam. And God would have killed Eve and not hurt Adam. Because Adam was part of, I mean, our Eve was part of Adam. You know, okay, for example, take Israel. Israel, the Bible says they were blinded. God blinded them. It was not their desire. It was not their desire. So he who branded them has got to save them yes. at the end of the day. Yes. He's got to carry the whole body again. He carried all the body because it was his plan. Yes. Let me read you this quote. In the church churches, Adam had been made in the image of God. He was a son of God. As a son of God, he could not be tempted to fall. Why? He is in the image of God. And anything in his image cannot fall. Anything in the original cannot fall. So Adam couldn't. Because he was in the image of God. That would be impossible. So God took a byproduct of a man to cause the fall. Who caused it? God. How? By taking a byproduct. Now, a byproduct is not in the original creation. Then it is subject to temptation. Why are we tempted? Because we are a byproduct. The prophet says in the message, you know, 
make a It says, God took all the steps. Spirit, theophany, and earthly body. A man, spirit, jumped to the theophany and came to the fresh body. Now, he says, if we came by the theophany body, we'd be knowing everything. But we jumped the fear fan so that we can be tempted. Then when we are tempted, then his attribute of being a redeemer can be manifested out. So when we had fallen down, then he stepped in to redeem us. Because he is the one who provided the fall. So he is going to be the one to redeem us out. There is no another way. He's going to do it. Now Christ, the mystery of God, revealed. Okay, the other way we're going to continue, maybe this afternoon. Now the prophet says, the entire Bible is the liberation of God, of God's mystery in Christ. Now what we are talking about, it is a mystery. Denominations cannot tackle it. No. They are earthly creatures. You know, we are living under the anointing of the frying ego. So the frying ego, you know, goes off the earth. Then the higher it goes, the better it looks down. So, under that anointing, the higher we go, the more things we know. Moses took us up to in the beginning. But the prophet of the hour has taken us beyond the beginning. Right in the mind of God. So, we can know we were his attributes. Why? We have gone higher until we've gone in his mind. Amen. Then now, when we are there, we know who we are. Amen. That's why we cannot be deceived. No, we can't. But all whose names were not written, no matter what, they will be deceived. But we can't be deceived. Because the truth of the hour makes us know who we are. Now when we realize who we are, that is what gives us a stand. The devil has no more power on you. Because you know who you are. Let's close our eyes. Remember, as a parent, you've got a duty to be interested in your children. Don't forget, you are the bride. And being the bride, we are supposed to reflect the life of Christ. Maybe there's somebody who says, God, help me. I want to take up the responsibility Amen. of my children. I know who I am. God bless you. God bless you. As I hand over to the pastor. And let's all stand, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> uh, let's just raise our hands and let's talk to the Lord. Father, we want to say thank you, <clears throat> Lord, for what our ears have heard again this morning. God, your thoughts, <clears throat> uh, your thinking, your plan. Uh, Lord, that how did you plan things from the beginning? Uh, Lord, we heard about Adam and we 
heard about Eve, we heard about Abraham. Lord, being concerned of God for his son Isaac, that he did not want him to marry God any of those women around, but Lord, go. And he looked for a faithful servant to go hunt a bride. And Lord God, we want to say thank you that how that you played out that story or to reveal at the end time that there will be a man that you'll raise up to send out to go look for a bride. And Father, we just pray and ask of you that you will be with us, O God, as we look to you. We pray, God, as fathers, that you will give us wisdom, give us skill, give us understanding, give us of yourself, give us of your divine revelation to see, oh God, that we cannot, oh Lord, be deceived. We cannot, Lord, because we are part of this great eternal being. As Eve, oh God, could not, you could not destroy her because she was a part of Adam. And oh God, you could not even do anything with Sarah. She was a part of Abraham. And Father, we want to say thank you that we being a part of you, you cannot deny us. And oh God, even if we try to deny you, we cannot. And oh God, we just want to say thank you. We're above the world atmosphere, above of God, the dimension of God of the natural disasters of this world. Lord, we have climbed into the heights of the word, see the unfolding word of God unveiled, made alive, made real before us. And God, we pray for our brother Martin Martin. We pray, Lord, that you will bless him, uh, his wife, Sister Beatrice. And uh, God, we pray for the church in Jerusalem. Pray, God, that your hand of blessing will be upon them. And uh, God, the other churches in the area, that you will bless them. And Father, we pray for the believers in Malawi, that you will be with each and every one of them. And Father, we pray for the body of Christ that God you will be with your people seeing of God this great unfolding of God see this great mystery of God revealed Lord how we just want to say thank you Lord we know who we are what we've been raised up for it's the original life the original seed the original word and father we want to say thank you that we have given you a voice Lord we are the expression a further expression of yourself. We just want to say thank you. We pray, God, that you will come and move from heart to heart, move from seat to seat. And oh God, whatever the body and I need, Lord, may you put an x ray through every individual. And oh God, may the supernatural God of oh God will x ray everybody and that you will bring healing to their body and healing to their souls. We want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing that song, God in Simplicity. Brother Brighton, I think, knows that song. God in Simplicity. <clears throat>
is the mystery. Amen. Let's just pray again. Father, we want to say thank you. That it's always been God in simplicity. Our God, you would use simple methods, simple ways of God to bring out the great mystery of God. And Father, we just want to say thank you that we are now we know that we are a part of Him. Oh God, we know that one day you'll take us home. It is God in simplicity. Lord, we just want to say thank you. And Father, we honor you. And Father, we just adore you and we just want to say thank you for, oh God, what you've done for us. And oh God, we just pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will be our portion and be our shield. God, may you bless our brother as you will continue on to the Word. You show us, oh God, that we are not just a drop-off. You designed to fall. You plan, you let it go. You put man in free moral choice. And oh God, to bring out these great attributes of God, we want to say thank you for your love and grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. We sing number 509, I know my Redeemer lives, who taught the Son to stand in the morning. And we can ask Brother Errol Peterson to come and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Who told the sun? Where to stand in the morning? Where to stand in the morning? Who told the ocean? Who told the ocean? You can only come. And who showed the moon? To hide. Where to hide till we meet? Whose words alone, Whose words alone can catch, catch a falling star? I know, I know, my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know my Redeemer. Testifies, testifies, his life and in me cries, in me cries, for I know my Redeemer, the very same God, the very same God, that spreads things in the order. Runs to the weary, the, the one and the weak, the, the, the same gentle hands, and the same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken. They conquer death. They conquer death. Victory. I know, I know, I know, my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know my Redeemer. I know my Redeemer lives. All of creation testifies. Life within me cries, in me cries, for I know my Redeemer.
lost the precious life he gave. Lost the precious life he gave. But now he's alive. There's an empty Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful once again this morning for what our ears have heard. As your servant Paul one time said, I do not come to you with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but I come to you with the power of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Lord, that your faith should not rest in the wisdom or the intellect of man, but in the power of God. And truly, O oh God, as your prophet said, that rapturing faith lies in the message. And we are so thankful for the word that's been ministered this morning. Lord, we can say amen, Lord, to what has been ministered. And Father God, the pure, pure word of God, straight from what the prophet has spoken, Lord. Oh God, because those on the other side, beyond the curtain of time, they said, Lord, we are resting on that. And on this side of the curtain, O oh God, we want to say we are resting on that. This is the message, O God, that will bring rapturing faith, that will change us from mortal to immortality. The message, O God, of God came straight from the throne of God. It never came from Jeffersonville, but it came, Lord, all the way from glory to call the people a bride, O God, to be identified with you, O God, those who were with you before the foundation of the world. They were the very ones, O God, that responded to your voice in this day. Say it in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. And here stands the mystery of God, Lord. The word now this morning manifested and veiled in human flesh. Christ being the mystery of God revealed, and the bride being the mystery of Christ revealed in this day. And to be part of this mystery, she must be him, Lord. Flesh of his flesh, spirit of his spirit, Life of his life, Lord. Word of his word. She is him this morning. Thank you for the minister of the word. May you bless our precious brother Martin. Thank you for his revelation, Lord. Thank you for his dedication. Thank you for the truth, Lord, that is being ministered unto your people. May you take you from strength to strength, from victory unto victory, from revelation to revelation, that the people in Malawi may rejoice in the ministry of the hour. Bless us this morning, even those who are sick, who have their hands raised this morning. May you touch each and every one by the power of your word, Father. Be with us now as we come with great expectation once again tonight to receive a blessing from your hand. We ask it in Jesus' name. We pray once again for the fathers, Lord. May you grant them the faith of Father Abram. Lord, may you grant them, Lord, the patience of Job. May you grant them, O oh God, the uh, that they may be, O oh Father God, uh, in, in O oh Lord, uh, men of the God's own heart, Lord. And may you grant him the wisdom of Solomon. Bless us this day as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You may take your seats. We want to say thank you, though, brother Martin, for sharing the word. May God bless him. Uh, there's been a meal prepared for the, from the Malawians for brother Martin, and different Malawians will be eating at the house of Judah. We want to say God bless you, God be with you. Tonight, Brother Martin will be speaking for us again at 6 o'clock. God bless you, God be with you.